Hello, scientific writers. Welcome to the next lesson. This lesson is on readability and how to achieve it. So what we'll talk about in this lesson is the definition of readability, how readability is uh, calculated and how it's viewed by readers. And I'll give you a lot of tips on how to make your writing the most readable that it can be. And so if your writing is more readable, your readers are more likely to understand what you're talking about without a lot of effort, uh, the more likely they are to enjoy reading it. And if they enjoy reading it, they're going to finish reading it. And that means that your acceptance rates are going to improve, your rejection rates are going to go down, and probably you'll get more citations too. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the learning outcomes for this lesson. So after you complete this lesson, you will be able to define the term readability. You will be able to explain the components of text readability. You'll be able to identify grammar and style choices that reduce readability. You'll be able to edit your sentences to increase readability. And lastly, you'll be able to describe strategies to increase visual readability. So what does readability mean anyway? Well, let's look at a dictionary definition of readability. This is from OxfordDictionaries.com. The main definition is the quality of being legible or decipherable. And then this sub definition 1.1 is the quality of being easy or enjoyable to read. And so that's the definition we are going to focus on. We're going to talk about ways to make your writing easy and enjoyable to read. Now, how do you evaluate readability or how do you measure readability? Well, there are some actual formulas that can be used to measure readability. These include the Flesh Reading Ease, the Flesh Kincaid Grade Level, the Gunning Fog Index, and the Smog Grade, which stands for Simple Measure of Gobbledygook. And each of them takes into account features such as the number of words per sentence, in other words, sentence length, and features like the percentage of polysyllable words. And it factors these features to give a readability score. So what you can do is go online and search for readability test tool or readability calculator or something like that. And you'll find some websites where you can paste in your text and it will give you a readability score. Now let's look at a graphic on how readability scores factor into real world readability. And so these indexes have been tested over and over again. They were tested as they were developed in the 1940s and they've been tested many times since then. And so this is what the researchers found out. Uh, let's look at this graphic. And what this is comparing is the sentence length, the uh, left-hand y-axis, to the flesh reading ease score on the x-axis. And so what you can see is that as the sentence length increases, the flesh reading score decreases. The lower the score, the lower the readability. And that can be seen in the blue bars. So for example, with the flesh reading score of 90 to 100, we're looking at a sentence length of about eight words per sentence. So when we see reading scores in the category of zero to 30, we're looking at sentence lengths of about 29 words per sentence. These are average sentence lengths. So some will be longer, some will be shorter. On average, they're about 29 words per sentence. Imposed onto this graph, we see this green line. And this represents the percentage of adults in the United States who can understand this writing. So with flesh reading ease score of 90 to 100, 90 to 100 percent of adults can understand that writing. And as you go to scores of 80 to 90, it drops off a little bit. Scores of 70 to 80 drops off a little bit more. Now, when you have flesh reading ease scores of 60 to 70, now it's fewer than 90% of adults can understand this writing. And from there, it takes a precipitous drop 
and when you get to scores of 30 and less, now we're looking at less than 5% of adults that can understand that writing. When you've eliminated 95% or more of the entire population from your audience, what does that do to the reach of your work? It makes it much smaller than it would be otherwise. Uh, if we have scores of 30 to 50, now we're looking at about you know, 30 to 35% of adults that can understand reading scores of 30 to 50. So that still cuts out a major percentage of the audience, but you should be able to capture the entire audience of scientists in that 30 to 50 category. But if your reading scores are below 30, uh, you're eliminating even other scientists from being able to understand what you're writing. Now let's look at some research. I'm going to show you a few different research articles where the authors have studied the readability of scientific writing over time or at uh, specific points in time. So we'll start with this study from 1983. And what they did was they looked at the readability of scientific papers from uh, a handful of journals here, starting in about 1800 and going until 1980 or so. And what we can see is that the early publications uh, around 1850, they had a flesh readability ease score of about 70. And then as we go to 1875, the scores are, are similar, but they might be trending downward. As we go to 1900, they're definitely trending downward. We're looking at scores of around uh, 50 at that time. 1925, now we're getting into scores that are well below 50. They're probably averaging a, a little bit over 30. 1950, we're down to 30. And in 1980s, we're down below 30. Now, these authors stated that they felt like the uh, readability scores had leveled off in the 1980s, and they were going to be uh, consistent from that time onwards. They were still saying that it's not a good thing that the scores had dropped so much, making scientific writing much less readable than it was in previous decades. Now here's another study. This one is from uh, 2002, published in the British Medical Journal. And in this study, they studied the mean flesh reading ease scores for uh, two different journals, uh, the British Medical Journal and the Journal of the American Medical Association. Uh, they also showed the FOG score here. With the FOG score, a higher number is less readable. So it's the opposite direction of the flesh reading ease score. But let's just focus on the flesh reading ease score so we can compare across studies. So in 2002, the flesh reading ease scores for the British Medical Journal was uh, around 32 uh, if you averaged it by journal. If you averaged it by author, it was it's a very similar number. In the Journal of the American Medical Association, the score was more like uh, 27. So the American Journal was not as readable as the British Journal, but both of them are hovering around that 30 score, uh, which remember 30 or less, it's going to exclude at least 95% of the adult population. Let's look at another study from 2006. And they looked at three medical journals, the Archives of Surgery, British Journal of Surgery, and the ANZ Journal of Surgery. And what they found were, again, low readability scores. Now they're even lower at this point. This is just a few years later. You can see all of the, the raw data here. And if I average this with my eye, you know, we're looking at flesh readability ease scores for the archives of surgery are around 15. And it looks like uh, between 15 and 20 for the British Journal of Surgery and around 20 for the ANZ Journal of Surgery. So again, they're going to exclude about 98% of the population from being able to read these articles with these low readability scores. Now let's look at the most recent article uh, from 2017. And in this article, they took a very large corpus of scientific writing going back to 1880 up until around 2015. And you can see by looking at this trend that uh, by the 1920s, we were below flesh reading ease scores of 30, and it was just a steady decline. 
Now, there was kind of a, a plateau during the 1980s, just like that other article we looked at said, but the plateau didn't last very long, and by the 1990s, it started dropping again, and then at 2000, the reading ease score started dropping very quickly, and you see now that it's hovering at around 10. Now, that is very unreadable. That makes very difficult reading. And so you're not doing your readers any favor if you're producing work that has that low of a readability score because it makes their job really hard. It makes it really hard for them to understand what you're writing about. That all not only hurts your readers, but it hurts you as an author as well because your work will have less of an impact. So as a reminder, when we have flesh reading ease scores of less than 30, very few people can read that work. And we've, we've got scores way below 30, and they've been below 30 uh, for 100 years. As your instructor, what I recommend to you as, as an author is to try to get your flesh reading ease scores into the 30 to 50 category. Now you can do that most of the time by implementing the tips that you will learn in this lesson.